Hello everyone, this lecture will be about MAS, Mobility as a Service and IoT, Internet of Things. It will be presented by Ivana Gacha and me, Katarina Madaric. We are both PhD students at the University of Zagreb at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing. Ivana will present you MAS first, then I will follow with IoT, and we will close off the lecture by discussing the benefits that MAS and IoT combined bring to the table as a united front. Hello everyone, this is Ivana and I will introduce you a new mobility solution known as Mobility as a Service or shortly MAS. Additionally, I will present what MAS can offer us and what are the main challenges regarding MAS. I would like to take the city of Valencia as an example. It is located on the east coast of Spain. We could all be in Valencia, but the whole pandemic situation has prevented us from being there. Even though we are physically prevented, we will go there virtually. Valencia is a beautiful city and also a very important tourist place due to its numerous cultural and historical monuments. Valencia is a city of oranges, endless beaches and delicious dishes of which the Paella Valenciana is the most popular. Valencia, like many other cities, struggles with traffic congestion, as you can see in the left photo, while the right photo shows the map of the afternoon traffic situation in Valencia. The red and a dark red routes represent congested places and places where driving is drastically slowed down. The conjunction problem is not characteristical just for Valencia. For example, in Bogota, every driver spent 191 hours a year uh, in conjunction, which is approximately eight days. Additionally, in the United Kingdom, drivers spend approximately 44 hours a year searching for a parking. There is also environmental and noise pollution problems. Uh, as the data suggest, the transportation problem is a global issue and the whole world is struggling with it. The transportation sector is considered to be one of the challenges mainly caused by urbanization. Urbanization defines the process of expanding cities, transforming rural areas into cities and an increase in the urban population. United Nations estimated that in 2018, 55% of the world population lived in urban areas, and they predicted that 68% will be living in urban areas by 2050. Therefore, the UN has presented the challenging future needs of the urban population and decided to put an emphasis on the importance of urban growth management. Focus on this research and presentation will be on transportation. The new mobility solution that takes advantage of ICT is mobility as a service. Mobility as a service is a concept in which different transportation options are integrated and offered to the users in order to meet their mobility needs. The MAS concept relies on the digital platform where the provision of the transport is managed and payment and booking services are integrated as well. Let's look at an example. If you want to get from point A to point B, just take your MAS application. You need to set the starting and destination points and MAS will offer you several options. For example, let's look at what option 2 offers. It first offers you to take a walk. After that, you will have to cycle for a few minutes. Then you need to take a local bus and at the end you need to use a rent-a-car to get 
to the desired location. If this option suits you, you can easily book it and do the payment through the application. There are different presentation of MAS stakeholders and also different understandings of the MAS ecosystem. Therefore, I decided to present MAS stakeholders by using quadruple helix model. It represents actors that interact and collaborate to create social innovation activities. Social innovations are innovations that try to satisfy the social needs and to improve the quality of life. In the center of mass quadruple helix model is mass. Uh, civil society is mapped to passengers, industry to transportation operators, government to government and academia to academia. Mass stakeholders give and receive goods from mass. Passenger gives personal data and receives solution for mobility problems. Transport operators give different forms of mobility and data and receive bigger customer market. Government gives regulation and receive conjunction reduction, space optimization and economic growth. Academia gives research and knowledge and receive more audience and interdisciplinarity. Now I will list some of the important challenges regarding MOS. Since MOS data is integrated and shared, it is crucial to protect it and it is important to prepare system against different type of attacks such as denial of a service. The first challenge to tackle is uh, data security. Due to the GDPR, it is crucial to ensure the data privacy. As the data is generated from different sources, it is also important to manage data aggregation. API standardization is important in order to make the interoperability easier and the development process more efficient. Passenger readiness to move up from well-known services in mobility to new ones that are ecological beneficial and include the different forms of transportation is another challenge. The next challenge is willingness to pay because users have their preferences. There is challenge regarding transport operators adaptation because increasing revenues, larger market and visibility motivates them to join the mass. Routing strategy is another issue. The routing algorithm must be able to process large amounts of data in real time and offer the most optimal routes. Research related to the routing problem is an old problem and in literature it is known as traveling safeman problem. Electric vehicle as well as autonomous vehicles bring challenges as they have specific requirements and bring a certain complexity to the transportation system. To conclude, urbanization process brings challenges to the transportation sector and the world is facing problems such as the congestion problem, parking problem, pollution and many others that are transport related. Mobility as a service is a new solution which exploits the benefits of information and communication technology to improve current transportation system. The mass strives to minimize dependency on private vehicles and support adaptation to other modes of transport which reduce congestion as well as contribute to environmental sustainability. It is important to know who are the main stakeholders, what are their needs and wants in the context of mass. Additionally, mass brings a lot of challenges, but the challenges are something that makes the mass more interesting and desired to research. At the end, the real life examples shows that the idea of mass is achievable.
These are the references I use for this presentation. And also these here. Katarina speaking again. Now we'll talk about the Internet of Things. So, why Internet of Things? As stated by the authors of the paper Internet of Things Strategic Research and Innovation Agenda, the goal of the Internet of Things is to enable things to be connected anytime, any place, with anything and anyone, ideally using any path network and any service. A lot of everyday objects are already connected to the Internet, like smartwatches, public lighting, household machines like the washing machine and the coffee machine. Sensors are installed in garbage cans to detect when they are full and cameras are connected for security. The list goes on and on. So, sensors are used to sense the environment and the actuators are used to act in the environment. For example, public lighting is usually turned on the whole night, which is mostly unnecessary. With IoT, lights can turn on only when motion is detected, and this way energy is saved and light pollution is reduced. The Internet of Things manifests itself in everyday life through a variety of functions and services in many domains. IoT enables the development of smart homes. Nowadays, with just your smartphone, you can control various things in your home. For example, the lighting, the audio system, the AC, appliances, and so on. Also, for the safety of the residents in the home, sensors for gas and fire detection are installed as well as smart locks. With IoT team, smart buildings are also developed. Gas detection, energy management and smart security systems are just some examples of, let's use the word intelligence, so some examples of intelligence introduced to buildings. Furthermore, IoT enables the development of smart cities. I already explained how to cut back on light pollution from public lighting with IoT. IoT also contributes in the prevention of traffic jams in cities and smart public transport is also made possible by IoT. Waste management is another crucial factor in cities. For example, IoT ensures that containers will not be overcrowded and will be emptied in time. Another way to improve the quality of life in cities where parking spaces are limited is smart parking systems where the users can see on their mobile phone where the empty parking spaces are around the city. This way they can also reserve their parking space so nobody occupies the, their chosen parking space while they get to it. Of course, IoT also contributes in the development of autonomous cars. In the industry, IoT is used for the automatization of many processes and for machine diagnosis. There are many branches, or better said, different IoT terms, such as industrial Internet of Things, Internet of Med Medical Things, Internet of Multimedia Things, and so on. IoT found its place in retail also. For example, it is used for inventory management and smart payments. Agriculture also benefits from the implementation of Internet of Things. It is very helpful in crop management and the implementation of smart irrigation systems so smart fields and smart farms are developed. There are many other applications, but if I would list and describe them all, this presentation will go on and on for a very long time, so I will stop now with the list. With all those applications, developing every day comes a great deal of connected devices. So it doesn't surprise that the number of connected devices worldwide is growing at a very high rate. Cisco defines the moment when the Internet of Things was created as the moment when the number of devices connected to the Internet exceeded the number of people. 
It is estimated that this happened between 2008 and 2009 based on the number of devices connected in 2010 when the ratio of devices connected to the internet and the world's population was 1.84, while in 2003 it was only 0.3. In this prediction from Statista on the left, the number of connected devices in 2021 is over 35 billion and by 2025 they predict it to be 75.44 billion. But how do we define the Internet of Things? It's important to mention that there are many, many different definitions of the Internet of Things made by various researchers from all over the world. For this presentation, I chose the definition by recommendation ITUT, which goes like this. The Internet of Things is a global infrastructure for the information society, enabling advanced services by interconnecting physical and virtual things based on existing and evolving interoperable information and communication technologies. Through the exploitation, of identification, data capture, processing, and communication capabilities, the Internet of Things makes full use of things to offer services to all kinds of applications, whilst ensuring that security and privacy requirements are fulfilled. In a broad perspective, the Internet of Things can be perceived as a vision with technological and societal implications. There are many different views on the architecture of IoT, with some ranging from three to even seven layers. For this lecture, I will keep it simple and present a three-layer architecture. On the bottom is the physical layer, often called the perception layer. This layer includes sensors and actuators with limited processing power and memory, with a very important characteristic of low power consumption, which is why they do not usually process data. Next is the network layer, and its primary task is to transfer data from the lower perceptual layer to the higher application layer. In this layer, it is possible to process the right data and control the sensors and the actuators based on simple automation rules. Additionally, in some cases, selection of data to be transferred to the high layer is performed to prevent overload. The highest layer of the Internet of Things, in which data is stored, processed, and through various services presented to the users, is the application layer. Services have become increasingly complicated over the years, ranging from simple data visualization to the inclusion of various forms of automation and the ability to manage a variety of devices. An important feature for RT is low energy consumption. This is made possible by optimizing components and using low energy communication modules. Also, many devices have implemented sleep mode where devices are sleeping until they are needed. Another idea is to have the device batteries powered by solar panels. This is especially useful in agriculture where the sensor stations are scattered around the field. Now we will talk about the benefits that MOS and IoT offer when they are combined. Bicycle renting is attracting more users every day. It is made easier by using smartphone applications where you can reserve a bicycle on the station of your choosing. There are many problems cyclists face during their trips. For example, uh, the quality of bicycle roads, possible road work, and so on. People choose bicycles over cars because of money savings and their health. But how do they know if that is really true? The health part. Yes, they're getting exercise this way. But is it really always healthier to use cycle to work? Unfortunately, users don't have detailed insights into air pollution for the length of their trip to work, to the grocery store, or just for their ride for fun. IoT and mass can change that. By using sensors to detect pollution, users can be given the best possible route depending on time and pollution. 
This doesn't benefit only cyclists, but also people in other forms of transport. With our group that we supervised during this workshop, we discussed to further develop this idea. For example, another feature would be to take the user's vital functions into account. So, if by a smartwatch it is detected that the user has been sitting down for a long period of time, it can suggest him to go cycling as the weather is nice and the pollution is low. One great example of green routing is an app developed under the project Symbiosis of Smart Objects Across Internet of Things Environments, Shorter Symbiot. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Program. One of the applications developed under this project was the green routing application. The mobile app offers green, less polluted routes to cyclists and pedestrians. Cyclists have sensors attached on their bikes and there are sensor stations across the city to make sure that the application users get the least polluted route from point A to point B. This is all. Thank you for your attention and we hope you have a great time on this workshop. If you have any questions, you can email us or contact us through the Microsoft Teams. Also, if you want to find out more about our research, you can visit our laboratory websites. I'm a member of the Social Networking and Computing Laboratory, and Katarina is a member of the Internet of Things Laboratory. Both laboratories are under the Department of Telecommunications at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing. Goodbye.